Recently, I've been filming for my new series, What Wildlife, about urban wildlife in London. This took me to Richmond Park. This park is only slightly outside central London, which means you can get there on the tube. It is an amazing place to see some great UK wildlife, from some amazing birds to the largest terrestrial mammal we have, the red deer. Richmond Park was created in the 17th century as a deer park by Charles I. Nowadays, it is home to one of the UK's greatest wildlife spectacles, the deer rut. This is when stags battle out for control of their holy grail, the harem. The tension in the air was evident throughout the park as stags with their blood up roam, looking for a fight. This led to a couple near misses and some quick getaways by me. But what really made the tension high was the great echoey roars that washed over the park as a message to all that the fight was on. Richmond Park has two species of deer, the red deer and the fallow deer. The red deer is the largest terrestrial animal in the UK and is quite an intimidating one too, with huge antlers and a neck mane which makes it look so big. Not to mention the boldness that males show to humans during the rutting season. Major conservation and reintroduction programs across Europe, especially in the UK, means that the red deer is no longer as rare as it once was. The fallow deer, on the other hand, is one much more likely to be seen in the countryside of southern England, like where I am, and is a much prettier animal with the white spots, smaller size, and more withdrawn behaviour. Although those antlers would be just as much use in attacking a human if they got too close during this period. The deer rut is all about stags trying to build up a harem as large as possible and to keep it for as long as possible. They put their lives on the line in the hope that when a female comes into season for as little as a few hours, they will be top dog or top deer at the time. Deers roar as the first stage of the competition of the deer rut. You can see a few here. <coughs> It holds a lot of information and is a warning to rival stags about the deer's size. The frequency and the depth communicates this as well as being attractive to females and therefore other deer can tell the quality of the male's genes just from his roar. Quite a lot of equipment goes into this roar. The throat muscles increase by up to 20% during this time. Humans experience a phenomenon called pharyngeal descent. I'm not even sure if I said that right. Um, but this is believed to be the reason that we can articulate language so much better than any other animal can and communicate like this. Red deer and fallow deer also experience this, which, makes, which gives you the reason why they can create this amazing sound. However, their pharynx goes even deeper, down closer to their sternum, as you can see here. Um, which is even more than the humans do. There's quite a difference between these two species in the roars that you can hear. The red deer is much deeper and longer and it travels much further um, and is more intimidating. But the fallow deer can't be beaten in terms of frequency. So you've got the red deer that you can hear here. And then the fallow deer, which is like this. The next competitive stage, if the deers have so far reached a stalemate, is parallel walking. This ritualistic walking is exactly how it sounds. As you can see here, they walk next to each other, still roaring with as high a frequency as they can, and size each other up. If they are of similar size and think they can take each other, then the next stage commences, the rut. This seemed to be quite rare in Richmond, as most standoffs ended with the obviously dominant male chasing off a much younger rival. Whether this was due to lack of dominant stag numbers, or if I was just too late in the season to see this, I don't know. However, I did get this small shot of a youngster practicing with a much older male. And when I arrived on the very first day, I got this shot of two juveniles practicing here. Rutting is a very dangerous stage of the competition to get to, as these antlers aren't just made to lock into each other and to push, they're actually made as weapons. They've evolved this way and injuries during the rut are very common. Many stags die every single year in these ferocious clashes. Filming in the park was fun and it was a lovely place to spend a few days. They weren't just deer to see there either, as on the pond they had some great water birds like Egyptian geese, cormorants and several swans to mention but a few. They also have some very tame squirrels, woodpeckers and something some of you might be surprised to hear is there, a parrot. 
The parakeet is an introduced species, um, and it seems that several several pairs escaped throughout history on a few occasions. So it's very difficult to to kind of isolate the actual incident that that resulted in them being such a such a common occurrence in this park. However, my favourite is that in the 60s, Jimi Hendrix released a pair, and obviously there's no way to prove this, but in my head, that's how they that's how they started. Their loud screeching call permeates everything when you're in the park near trees and can be heard in the background of most of the clips shown. A beautiful bird, yet one that is very much hated for its destructive capabilities. All these wildlife coincide with humans in a really lovely way as they carry out their lives around hikers, dog walkers and horse riders, all with London's amazing skyline watching over, on a clearer day than this was anyway. It truly is an awesome example of wildlife and human-urban developments living alongside each other.